Just as a heads up, this review is for the PC version of A Good Snowman is Hard to Build, but it is available on both Android and iOS. A Good Snowman is Hard to Build is a top-down, adorable-as-hell puzzle game from the minds of Alan Hazelden and Benjamin Davis. Originally, it was supposed to be a quick and festive little game for the two to make after finishing up a longer project, and after roughly a year in development, it's been released. I'm honestly glad that they ended up spending so much time on A Good Snowman, because it's clear that it's an adorable labor of Love, and all of that time has allowed for it to become a finely tuned and interesting journey of building snowmen. The premise of the game is pretty simple. You're a monster wandering around a garden going from area to area building snowmen. The act of actually putting the snowmen together is a bit more complicated than it sounds though. You have to get three balls of snow, one large, one medium, and one small, all stacked on top of each other in the right order. You can't pull the balls around, you can only push them, so if any of the edges are against the wall, you can't push from that side. Pushing a ball over untouched snow will make it larger, but it will also remove the snow as you push it, so a smaller ball can be moved along the same path without growing. You can also push a smaller ball off of whatever it's stacked on top of, provided nothing's in the way. In addition, there are undo and reset buttons, and there's no limit to how many times you can undo whatever you just did. If you wanted, you could actually completely reset the puzzle with just the undo button, but for the sake of ease of use and flow, there is a reset button. So you take the mechanics of moving balls of snow around and stacking them, and then you add in obstacles, and you add in rooms of varying shapes and sizes, and bam, you've got a good snowman is hard to build. The puzzles get gradually more difficult as you go along as you'd expect, and the game really forces you to think about spatial reasoning and movements in a really interesting way. There are no timers, and you can come and go as you please. More often than not, there's more than one room available for you to complete at any given moment, so if you get frustrated with one puzzle, you can just leave to another one and come back later. Interestingly enough, enough, puzzles don't reset when you leave the room, so with some snowmen you can actually leave through one door, enter through another, and finish building in a way that you wouldn't have been able to if puzzles did reset. It's an interesting choice, and I really like the way that it changes up the flow of the game and some of the thinking that you can do on certain puzzles. As an added little adorable bonus, you can interact with various objects in the world. You can kick or push things, you can sit on benches and lean against hedges, and after you've built a snowman, you can actually just hug it. There's no real benefit to these interactions, they're just fun. Lastly, the music and sounds. Ryan Roth did a great job creating calming soundscapes that serve as the perfect accompaniment to the pace of a good snowman, and they create a unique and interesting atmosphere that I haven't experienced before. As an added little touch, when you hug a snowman or sit on a bench, the soundscape will change and the camera will slowly zoom out. A Good Snowman is Hard to Build is a delightful and challenging puzzle game that's deceptively adorable. While the puzzles can be hard, the game itself spares no effort to relax you and ensure you that you have all the time in the world to build your snowy friends. With no timers, no automatically resetting puzzles, and calming sounds all the way through, it's a unique experience and a puzzle game that I feel many of you will enjoy. You can pick it up on Steam for 10 bucks or on mobile for 5 bucks. Whether you're looking for a game to put in your pocket and play while out and about, or something to challenge yourself with at home during some downtime, this is definitely one that you should check out. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Indie Bites. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please remember to leave a like and subscribe for more. If you have any indie games that I should check out, then please shoot them my way. You can leave a comment down below, or you can drop me a line on Twitter, my handle's at ForkH, or you can shoot me an email at Fork4H at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. Bye!